They both spent years in advocacy and in front of law school classrooms, been victims of drive-by shootings and prosecuted high-profile cases like the Golden State Killer. Either way it goes, the race between Ten Ho and Alana Matthews for Sacramento County District Attorney will be historic, electing the first person of color to ever hold that office. In the waning hours of their campaigns, Fox 40 and Sari Tonsil takes a look at what may be some of the deciding factors. Strange things happen during a campaign, like having a 12-time Grammy award-winning musician endorse you out of the blue. What's this John Legend thing? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that was a complete surprise to me, but he initially, I believe he tweeted out that he was going to support my race. That's just one of the situations Alana Matthews has run into this election cycle as she's made her case to Sacramento County voters to be their next district attorney. So my campaign has been the subject of racial attacks. We had someone, um, we do phone banking, we do text banking, and someone, um, you know, broke into one of our calls and used the N-word. Facing attack now and throughout her life just because of who she is is something Matthews and her primary opponent, Ten Ho, share. A prosecutor under the current district attorney. At gunpoint, Ten Ho's family escaped communist Vietnam. His commercials feature some of his family's biggest challenges. He's also lived through the capture and execution of an innocent loved one. You know, my grandmother um, in Vietnam uh, essentially was kidnapped by the communists and without a judge, without a jury, without a prosecutor, uh, because they wanted to seize my grandfather's property. Both candidates feel their backgrounds have uniquely equipped them to empathize with the frustrated public looking for reform because they too know what it's like to be vulnerable and need the support of a societal system. When there is legislation that is pending, that they come to the legislature and they get to testify and make sure that they aren't forgotten. That kind of effort through the Voices for Victims program is one way Hose tried to ensure the true needs of crime victims don't get lost in all the filings and court dates. Matthews believes the perception of the office Ho still works in and that she used to is not favorable because its current leadership hasn't acted like the community is a valuable resource. Instead of build fences, we need to build bridges. But why that is so important is because the community is where your witnesses are. Communities are where your corroborators are. We need the community. Ho counters that critique by pointing to his own work with Brother to Brother in Del Paso Heights and the Lao Family Community Development Center. He's also already meeting with the leadership of Big Brothers Big Sisters to build public trust for his DA administration by crafting a long-term youth mentoring program to be run out of his office. According to opponents, Matthews, a lack of legislative partnerships and community buy-in has reduced how nimble the DA's office could be with prevention in many areas, homelessness among them. Look at people's prior criminal histories. There's legislation that says we can be a part of expunging their records or helping support that so that if they have shown that they have not committed any crimes or been causing harm in the community, then they can clear their record. Qualifying them for many more assistance programs than would otherwise be available. Ho says more than helping those in need qualify for assistance, a DA's office under his guidance would become the safety net for some leaving the jail with no place to go through the creation of a 24-7 reception center offering motel vouchers and much more. So the idea is to do a warm handoff where a case manager takes them there. We have a small window to get to people in this situation, to get them in those services and to get them to want those services. Ho has taken $15,000 in donations from law enforcement unions and sources, which may give some voters the impression of continuing the current office's perceived blind backing of law enforcement. To him, the law is the law for everyone. Whether you wear a blue uniform or blue jeans, whether you're on probation or whether you're a police officer, in my opinion, the law applies equally to everyone, and everyone is held accountable to that same standard. With cases like the police killing of Stephon Clark and absence of prosecution still fresh in the minds of many who will be casting ballots, Matthews says. That certainly is um, a deep area of uh, distrust and actually, you know, concern for many community members, which is why I decided not to take um, contributions from police unions and they do give a lot of money so that was a principal stand that I took. Freeing, she claims, any decision she might make in a future case similar to Clark's from the specter of police payback. Sincere Tonsil, Fox 40 News.